Hello everyone in our channel. Today we are going to describe about introduction to bridge and its types. Bridge is a structure built to span physical obstacles without closing the way underneath such as a body of water, valley, or road, for the purpose of providing passage over the obstacle. Bridges are further classified according to their span length, as short, medium and long. Types of Bridges There are basically two types of cable bridges developed in trail bridge standard in case of our country which are, suspended, and suspension bridges. Suspended bridge has downward sagging walkway. Sagging walkway cables are suspended below their anchorage. Cables are anchored into the main anchorage foundation at both banks. The main components of this bridge are, walkway cables and handrail cables, walkway system and main anchorage foundations. Suspension bridge has upward cambered walkway. Main cables are hanged over the towers and anchored to the main anchorage foundation. Walkway cables are anchored to the pylon foundations. The main components of this bridge are, main cables and walkway cables, towers, walkway system, main anchorage foundations and pylon foundations. Suspended bridges are also known as D-type whereas, suspension bridges are known as N-type bridges. The selection of the D-type or N-type depends mainly on the topography of the bridge site. The D-type of bridge is selected where the bridge foundations can be placed at sufficiently high position giving required freeboard from the highest flood level whereas, the end type of bridge is selected only when the suspended type bridge is no more feasible due to insufficient freeboard. D type bridges are more economic, simple to design and construct than suspension type, and are applicable in 85% cases. Similarly end type bridge is more expensive and more complex in survey, design, and construction than the suspended type bridge. End, are only applicable in 15% cases. Furthermore, bridge with an upper horizontal beams that carries roadway or railway is known as deck of the bridge. In deck slab bridges, the deck itself is the structural frame or the entire deck is thin beam acting entirely as one primary member. These types are used where the depth of structure is critical factor. A slab deck is one where the deck is analyzed as a plate. If the slab has the different stiffness in two directions right angle to each other, the bridge is analyzed as the orthotropic deck and the bridge is known to be the deck slab bridge. Truss Bridge A truss bridge is a bridge whose load-bearing superstructure is composed of a truss, a structure of connected elements, usually forming triangular units. The connected elements, typically straight, may be stressed from tension, compression, or sometimes both in response to dynamic loads. The trusses handle both tension and comprehension, with the diagonal ones in tension and the vertical ones in compression. Trusses are very rigid, lightweight and can support heavy loads. Trusses serve in transferring the load from a single point to the wider area. The weight of the bridge is very less when compared with other types. Basically, the span length of truss bridge is in between 50m 110m. The advantages of truss bridges are Easily built in the factory and then framed on site. The piers or supports are comparatively less when compared to the beam bridge. Strong, rigid, and very light on weight possess efficient use of materials. The disadvantages of truss bridges are Requires high skilled professionals to design it. Complex in design than simple bridges. An arch bridge is a bridge with abutments at each end shaped as a curved arch. Arch bridges work by transferring the weight of the bridge and its loads partially into a horizontal thrust restrained by the abutments at either side. A viaduct, a long bridge, may be made from a series of arches, although other more economical structures are typically used today. The know of curves, arches, in a bridge depends on stress and loads that bridge should support. The span length of arch bridges is normally up to 250m. The advantages of arc bridges are Easy to build with the locally available material. Very rigid and extremely strong. Built up with a variety of materials like stone, concrete, steel, etc. 
The disadvantages of arc bridges are. They take a long time to build. Require a massive amount of building materials to build. Bridge that uses timber or wood as its principal structural material are wooden bridges. One of the first forms of bridge, those of timber have been used since ancient times. They are generally constructed for short spans or as temporary bridges. This type of bridge is not useful for heavy loads. Prefabricated wooden bridges can be assembled quickly, something which reduces the deleterious effects of construction on traffic flow. This can act as attraction for tourism in the trekking sites. Its advantages are High toughness An environmentally friendly and a renewable material. Wood has a very high specific strength due to its low density and reasonable strength, and wood's low density also makes it easier to transport. Its disadvantages are Wood is highly anisotropic, highly combustible, and susceptible to termites, woodworm, and infestations. Also, wood cannot be used at high temperatures and is susceptible to rot and disease. Site Selection Criterion for Suspended Bridge The main purpose of the technical field survey is to select the appropriate bridge site. The site should optimally serve the local people. Site selection should Fulfill the general conditions Have stable bank and slope conditions Have favorable river conditions Have shortest possible span The bridge site should fulfill a number of general conditions like The bridge site should be selected at or near to the traditional crossing point The freeboard between the lowest point of the bridge and the highest flood level should not be less than 5m For this sufficient clearance between the lower foundation saddle and HFL should be maintained. The bridge span in the standard is limited to 120M span. Foundation should be placed at least 3M behind the soil slope and 1.5M behind the rock slope from the front edge of the river bank. The selected bridge site must have favorable river conditions. Accordingly, a bridge should be located on a straight reach of the river beyond the disturbing influence of larger tributaries on well-defined banks a bridge should be located at a site with safe and stable slope and bank conditions the surveyor must identify any potential instability features or failure modes of the soil or rock slope and along the bank if the slope and bank is soil potential instability features and failure modes are bank erosion toppling instability of the bank Erosion of the slope Landslide If the slope and bank is rock, potential instability features and failure modes are Plain failures in a rock slide along the slope Wedge failure leading to the fall of rock mass Toppling leading to the fall of rock blocks Rotational slide is similar to the landslide in a soil slope Such failure is likely when the material of the rock is very weak, soft rock and the rock mass is heavily jointed and broken into small pieces. After completing investigation of the site, categorize the bridge site as good. All OR most of the features are favorable and if the surveyor is confident about the stability of the slopes, proceed with further survey. Bad. Most of the features are unfavorable. Reject site. Questionable. Most of the features are favorable and some are unfavorable. The site is questionable. In this case, further detailed investigation by an experienced geotechnical engineer is necessary. For detail refer to the SBD survey manual. As far as possible, the bridge site should be selected at a location where protection works will not be required. If protection works are unavoidable determine the required special structures like retaining wall, drainage channels, etc. A tentative design with dimensions and location of these structures should be illustrated in a sketch showing a plan view in a typical section. But it is best to avoid bridge sites, which require river protection works. Identification of soil and rock types is required for appropriate foundation design. Soil and rocks can broadly be classified as per the following tables.
Identification of soil and rock. Excavate a test pit with a depth of up to the estimated foundation level, but not less than 2.0 m, or up to the bedrock at the proposed foundation locations. If the bank slash slope is soil, investigate each layer of soil in the pit and classify the soil according to the soil classification chart, filling in the soil investigation table as per the following example. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any queries regarding this, kindly comment down. We will try to get you as soon as possible.